There's a short history of one-on-one -on -one fighting games trying to spin off into other genres. Mortal Kombat had the infamous mythology, Special Forces, and Shaolin Monks games, Virtua Fighter had the barely talked about Virtua Quest, Soul Calibur had a Wii hack and slash for some reason, and Dead or Alive, let's just say, did its own thing. Uh, probably the most ambitious and high budget of the bunch comes from Tekken though, with Death by Degrees, and there is a lot going on in this game. Combat that tries to redevelop the wheel, weapons, backtracking, puzzles, sniping segments, a leveling and skill system, stealth, swimming, minigames, plenty of cutscenes, the game promises to balance so many different things at once, so let's dive in and look at all the pieces to see what this fascinating amalgamation of a game gets right, what it gets wrong, and if it all comes together. From a critical and sales standpoint, it absolutely did not. It came out towards the end of the PS2's life cycle in 2005, it's one of those games that quickly found itself in the bargain bin, and without knowing anything about it, you can sort of tell why just by looking at it. Unless you're ultra familiar with what Nina looks like, nothing about this by the numbers cover screams Tekken, until you zoom in and enhance to see that the full title is Tekken's Nina Williams in Death by Degrees. Initially it was just called Nina, which I feel is a far more memorable title. Death by Degrees is a reference to the fighting controls using all 360 degrees of the right analog stick, but it has a double meaning because the bad guys want to overheat the world by burning methane hydrate on the ocean floor and kill everyone by degrees, I suppose. I, I can just imagine the boardroom light bulb moment when they came up with this mediocre title. Regardless, this is very much Nina's game, who, if you don't know, is a badass super assassin fighter type who's meant to be Irish despite having an American accent, and this game plays through a typical Nina mission while clearing up some of her backstory. It's set before the first Tekken, after all. But the game is way more Resident Evil than it is Tekken. You have all the exploration and door unlocking and puzzling of an old Resident Evil game, and as far as that point-and-click-esque puzzling goes, it does a remarkably good job at keeping things clear enough that you never feel completely lost, but difficult enough that you actually have to think, and that's what this adventure style of game can struggle with most. Like, in these games, it's not uncommon that you have to consult a walkthrough to learn that you needed to combine the clamp with the clothesline line and the rubber duck to progress, but here it's all logical and rewarding. All of the written documents are meaningful, and if you take note of things at the very start of the game, that knowledge will come in handy eight hours later at the end. The setups and payoffs are great memory tests that don't feel obvious, like it'll show you that these statues actually come to life as mechs, and then you need to remember where you saw them so that you can destroy them, or near the end you need to take a medallion into hot and cold areas, so logically you take it into the freezer and boiler rooms that you visited way back at the start of the game. At another point, you see enemies that are looking for something they've lost, and hours later you find what they were looking for when you visit the room that they were in. It's rewarding to keep track of everything that you see, hear, and read because most of it comes back around at some point. As simple as it is, it's remarkable at making everything feel significant, and it gives you a sense that thought and care went into designing everything. And the more straightforward, less memory-based puzzles are impressive too. My favourite one has you directing a guy through a maze while he's being chased, but you have very limited vision of where he is, so you have to go off a few cameras and his descriptions of intersections to get him to the exit. Again, it's really, really simple, but it's cerebral and inventive enough to make you feel clever. There was one puzzle that I really didn't like though, where you had to enter a password to continue. The game drops so many codes and passwords around the map, so I tried all of those to no avail, only to find out that it wanted me to simply enter R for Romeo and J for Juliet because there's a Romeo and Juliet painting on the wall. That was the one time I had to use a walkthrough, but thankfully it was only that one time. So Death by Degrees gets the fundamentals of a good adventure game down well, but it's also trying to be a Devil May Cry-esque hack and slash, and this is where things aren't quite as smooth. The most glaringly obvious problem is the fixed camera, which frequently surprises you with enemies off screen, and it even has Nina fighting them off screen sometimes, which is like, how did that even happen? And it switches really often depending on where you are, so you'll constantly be disoriented by what's going on. Like Rise to Honor, you flick the right stick towards enemies to attack, but when the camera switches, you'll be caught flicking it in the wrong direction all too often. Even just running around outside of combat is irritating because you'll need to realign where you're running to account for the camera changes. Nina can't help but do a weird twitch or spin after every cut because of this. As for the combat itself, it doesn't feel great. It works, and the more you use it, the better it gets, and there's plenty of combos and some timing and decision making to be done, like all good combat systems, but it just feels loose and unimpactful. You use the triggers for grab combo and a high damage special meter x-ray move, beating Mortal Kombat 9 to that impressive visual effect, and building up the meter to pull off one of these moves always feels great, unlike doing basically anything else. 
A lot of the problem stems from the way dodging and blocking is handled. Dodging actually uses the left stick instead of the right, the same stick you use to move, where you need to flick it in one direction and then quickly bring it back to the center to register it as a dodge or just let go of the stick so it recenters itself. What ends up happening is the time between your brain realizing you should dodge, the joystick returning to its default position, and the game realizing you want to dodge rather than simply move is way too long for you to have actually dodged what's coming for you. So the dodge is instead useful as a move in combos, whereas it should be useful for, you know, dodging. So instead you try to block, but this involves flicking the right stick towards enemies just like an attack. If you time it right, it'll block instead of attacking. Now, to be fair, it does work, but it's limiting to not have a choice between blocking and attacking at times, and it's unnatural to use the attack input to block. Uh, both blocking and dodging kind of just feels like you're relying on the game figuring out your intentions, and, and it doesn't always get it right. So the most effective strategy ends up simply being spamming combos and moving a lot in the hope that you don't get hit. No matter how many enemy types they throw at you, they're all defeated by spamming the same combos. Because dodging and blocking is so bad, you never really get into that twitchy fighting game flow that Tekken and all good fighters get you into, and the worst part is, a normal control system would have fixed these problems. Regardless of if you like this combat or not, and I know that there are a few defenders of it out there, I think that you'll agree that traditional controls would have vastly improved things, and it doesn't help that it makes you press both the triggers on the one side of the controller or click in the right stick to do certain attacks. It's just sort of icky, and again the camera makes it all worse. You can hold a trigger to go into a free cam mode to subvert the camera issues, but locking on is too clunky, it'll lock off enemies seemingly at random, and lots of areas simply don't let you use the free cam. Death by Degrees truly has one of the most asinine camera systems that I've ever had the pleasure of dealing with. The true most effective strategy in combat though is simply using weapons, which are powerful and get the job done quick. Melee weapons knock back multiple enemies at once, firearms work great at a distance, and throwables like grenades are a bit clunky but are better than nothing. So exploring for weapons is important simply so you can get the combat over and done with quickly. You play a neat swapping minigame to open the weapons caches scattered around, which themselves are a godsend, and taking out goons with dual katanas is actually very cathartic. Exploring for food is also very important. The game is quite challenging, but you can always pause mid-fight, open the inventory, and just eat 20 meals until your health is full again. The fact that you can do this takes a lot of tension out of the combat, especially because there's plenty of food to be found, but I'm also thankful that you can do this because the combat is so lame. It's also a great way to cheese the otherwise frustrating boss battles. The first one in particular is very, very punishing, and it will force you to get used to the controls, but the bosses and the game in general gets easier as it goes along because of the leveling up and stockpiling of items. Leveling not only lets you buy new combos with experience points, but it more importantly dramatically improves your max health and x-ray meter, and you level quick enough to not need to grind, which I appreciate. I comfortably hit the level cap well before the end of the game. In an ideal world, I'd be sneaking around and breaking necks to avoid the combat even more, but the camera problems infect the stealth too. Enemies will spot you from way off screen, so you'll want to use the free cam mode, but ignoring when it doesn't even let you, in that mode you have to run at full speed, like you can't even walk, let alone sneak, meaning that enemies will often just hear you before you even see them. So the combat's no good, and that's a huge problem, but just how big of a problem it is depends on how good the rest of the game is. Among the fighting and puzzling, the occasional forced set piece sniping segment tends to break things up, but it's just duck and cover shooting, sort of like Namco's very own Time Crisis, which shares some of the same developers. It'd be fun if I had a light gun, but as it is, it's frankly too simple to be interesting, and each sniping segment goes on for far too long. Now, from top to bottom, Death by Degrees is dripping with a certain Metal Gear Solid vibe. From the menus and UI, to the infiltration mission and getting captured story, to the vent crawling, to the mechs and drones, to the communication over an earpiece, to the military rations, to the flamboyant villains, there's even trippy boss battles where Nina gets drugged and has to fight off zombie hallucinations. I'd go as far as saying that Death by Degrees imitates Metal Gear Solid far more than any other game, only with less philosophy and politics, and more bikinis and heavy metal. I'm sure you've already noticed, but it's very Japanese male gaze fan service stuff. Her clothes change and tear apart over the course of the game, and there's one point where Nina has to go through a metal detector, which apparently means taking off almost everything. It's very, very lowbrow, and it's very corny. The CIA and MI6 team up to send Nina into a fight club on an eccentric luxury cruise ship owned by a criminal 
organization to uncover their evil plan to make a super weapon. Just another day at the office in the Tekken world. Namco get to once again prove how good they were at cutscenes, and we get to save planet Earth. Unfortunately, the story is very standard save the world exposition dump stuff, and the characters are too underbaked to really leave an impression. Like, take the evil villains which you take down in a series of boss battles. They're clearly designed to be silly, colorful, and over the top, but they never quite go over the top. Like, they're never given any crazy speeches, you don't see them enough to really get to know them, and their voice actors don't do a bad job, but they never seem too enthusiastic. I think he should be your priority instead. How about it? you and me, partners? One of the villains is Nina's younger sister and rival Anna, who's in the other Tekken games. We're treated to some flashbacks of just why they hate each other so much, which I appreciate. They blame each other for the death of their father, who died when they were kids. The drugged boss battles send Nina into flashbacks of the event, and this is the better told, more interesting story that helps explain why Nina is the cold-blooded type that she is. The most memorable character in the game is actually the cruise ship itself. It's a mishmash of art deco, ancient Greece, and a regular cruise ship, and I'm here to bask in its weird ambience. The game looks really nice too, with the relatively high-res textures and reflections and environments being well thought out, and though it's mostly set on the ship, the middle third of the game takes place in a grimy industrial prison cross research facility, which I initially thought that I'd dislike, but I found it to be a really memorable and interesting place in its own right. It's run down, depressing and thematically a lot darker than you'd expect from Tekken. The atmosphere is almost more like a horror game. All of the coolest moments in Death by Degrees have a lot more to do with the adventuring than the fighting or the broader narrative. Like, there's a cool moment where you swim through a fish tank to sneak into someone's private quarters, and I loved all the times that I had to figure out just what I was meant to do to escape an area. But there is one more glaring problem to dampen even the adventuring, and that is the absolute barrage of loading screens. Most doors will cut to a loading screen, all of the cutscenes will cut to a loading screen, multiple loading screens will be spliced in during cutscenes, there'll even be loading screens while you're underwater and trying to keep an eye on your oxygen gauge. So traveling becomes a pain because you have to wait so often in a game that's already slow paced. The animations for picking stuff up and scanning things are also really slow. The combat is usually more annoying than it is fun. The menus aren't smooth and summed up, Death by Degrees feels a lot like an endurance test. It's hard to recommend beyond diehard Tekken fans and even then I'd hope that you're a diehard Nina fan and if you are I'm guessing that you've already played this. And if you are a fan, you'll appreciate the simple, short, challenging bonus unlockable campaign where you play as Anna, and the unlockable secret boss battle you get for completing it. There's also plenty of costumes and a new game plus mode which makes the higher difficulty settings more tolerable, and there's plenty of little references to Tekken characters like with the posters on the wall, or a cameo by Heihachi. If you're playing this game for the first time and find that the combat isn't for you, I'd consider downloading a save file and just playing through the new game plus mode if you're only here to check out the game's story and adventure stuff. It's far more digestible when you have max stats the entire time, and you even get unlimited endurance weapons in new game plus if you want it to be really breezy. Despite everything, and despite not really enjoying the game, I just have to appreciate how high Death by Degrees aims. I wanted to make this video simply because it's such an overambitious oddity of a game. All they really had to do was make a bouncy beat em up expanding upon the Tekken Force modes, and honestly it probably would have turned out better. Like, you could argue that Tekken 5's Devil Within mode is exactly that, but instead Namco shot for the skies, and I, I like to see that. It's, it's better to aim high and fail, and there is at least a really solid adventure game trapped inside here somewhere. There's a small push these days for the game to get a remaster or a follow-up, and series director Katsuhiro Harada teased a PS4 release of the game on Twitter back in 2014, but that tweet didn't get much attention at all. Sadly, I think Death by Degrees is just as remembered for coming with a Tekken 5 demo disc as anything else, but I do think that it's a game that could be tweaked and fixed, because Death by Degrees is all great ideas and poor execution. And with that, we wrap up a review of Death by Degrees. Thank you for watching. Um, this is sort of a follow-up video to my last review, which was of Jet Li's Rise to Honor, which also used the right stick for all the combat, like it tried to sort of reinvent the combat just like this did, but it, it sort of did it in a, in a simpler and smoother way. So if you haven't watched that yet, I'd recommend watching uh, my Rise to Honor review. And it's a really cool game, and I highly recommend it more so, way more so than Death by Degrees. And um, yeah, thank you for watching. 
Uh, now I get to thank all my patrons, so thank you to all my patrons. Uh, thank you to all the patrons coming up on the screen. And especially thank you to my $5 patrons. Adam Beals, Adam Davidson, Analog Man, Anthony Gallagher, Anthony Heisel, Big J, Blake Barnett, Boggy Online, Cade the Dingo, Connor Salinas, Cuggles, Devin Grandal, Dominic, Dominic Chakoki, Doe Pants, Evil Chicken, Gary Pay, Hazardous Kirby, Casey, Kayla, Labcat, Lachlan Jones, Lil Jake, Lucky the French Dude, Lucas Ray Sevic, Maximilian Kunzman, May Arise, Mazaki, Melanie G, Mini Me Found, he's bound to astound when he compounds these profound renowned sounds in a crowd in 7.1 surround sound, Mrs. Mini Me, Mustache Duct Tape, Peaceful Kumquat, Plague, reading this is a binding legal contract, I hope not. Riddlin' for Kids, Skyed Panthera, Tia, Test Drive Unlimited 2, The Last Great Opium Den, Thomas Damsgaard, Traplaw Ross, Travis, Trevor Corbin, Trixie Emerson, Writing on Games, and Zindictive. Thank you all for watching. Uh, it's amazing that this this Patreon readout is becoming such a such a mouthful. It's just incredible that so many people are, you know, supporting this goofy little YouTube thing I do. So thank you sincerely. Um, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy.